Also, a lot of people think that we know everything about animals. That's not really true, because the sixth sense of animals, their collective knowledge of their environment, is something absolutely special and novel. So we can ask animals, what is it that you see in the environment that we didn't know, tell us? And that's very new. Something that all the old great cultures did, the Incas, the Mayas, the American Indians, they all had their special animals, but they only had them locally. And now we can remotely observe the intelligence of animal life around the planet. And that's amazing and really, really special. Well done. <laughs> So I got the opportunity to follow this amazing group of researchers around uh, using animal trackers to help unlock the secret life of animals. So let me start where it started for me, and that is in Namibia. This is Namibia. It's on the southwestern coast of Africa. It takes a long time to get there. And when I landed in Windhoek, which is the capital, got in a car, the local driver took me out into the bush. And I will admit, Namibia is different than other African countries I've been to because I didn't see any civilization for the hour plus ride to the Elephant Lodge. Well, we're here in Namibia because this is a place where nature is still in pretty good shape. The large mammals are there, the farmers are protecting the animals, they're using them as well. But it's this fine interplay that still works. But into the future, as human population increases, as problems arise with climate change, we want to help them to protect the animals better, but we also want to learn more about the animals because we know that they can tell us much more than we ever expected in the past. This is also where I met up with Martin, the director of the Max Planck Institute. He invited me here to witness the convergence of just a handful of great minds from many different fields, all working to solve a few big problems. We have the space agency here, which is really important for the link, an applied science organization that does the on the ground work and interactions of animals with humans, technology people here. And we have the basic biologists that really want to know about the biology, the very basic biology of an animal. The veterinarians are included because they know best if an animal is diseased, if it is stressed. So all of that information combined is really what makes this dream team of people. It rarely happens because you hardly ever have these combinations of skills that are needed to really solve a problem. But we have that problem and we're losing animals. Uh, we want to learn from animals. And for that, you just need a combination of skills. I met everyone here for the first time in the desert scrub, except Martin, who I met in 2007 when I was living at a remote research facility in Panama. He came in briefly to put a few tags on orchid bees. And that's when I saw his passion. He uses technology to understand animals. And as I discovered, his passion goes back to when he grew up. Well, for me personally, this is a dream come true because you know, I grew up with cows on a farm. I know that farmers know from the animals. If you don't grow up, if you don't really live with your animals, you don't know these things. And many of us have moved away from that, into cities, into lives that are without animals. Except your dog, you know what your dog is doing or your cat is doing, you can learn from them. But now we can learn from wild animals again. And we want to bring that back to people so that everybody can feel the, the fascination of knowing about an elephant and what they're doing, what they're facing, that their troubles. To know the secret life of animals means that you know everything they know in their life. So that means we can already put a, a tiny little recording device on a young animal and learn what it knows about the environment, all its relationships with other animals and where it has been in an environment. And once we know that, we can learn what an animal does, how it takes decisions and what it tells us about the environment. It's like us. I mean, if you know where we grew up, what we did in between, and then know what kind of decisions we take, you know everything about us. And that's really what we want to know. And we can interpret that to the good of the animal and the good of humankind. This is one reason that they've created Icarus. Icarus is a system that allows us to have very small electronic devices, little cell phones in, in principle, that record what an animal is doing and sends it through a satellite, in this case, the space station, to us on the ground. And we can feed it back to the rangers at site to really help the animals, to protect the animals, but also to learn from animals. All of this may seem abstract, so here's a few examples of how it might work. Imagine an elephant or a rhino that could have a small Icarus tag on it. That small computer in the tag could send real-time data back and forth to a satellite to give rangers on the ground real-time data as to where it is and what it's doing. 
it could be programmed to send an alert if it detects a gunshot or even a helicopter. This would revolutionize catching poachers. Another way Icarus could prove very helpful is in its monitoring of global phenomena, like earthquakes or volcanoes. There's some evidence that animals may know when an earthquake is going to happen before we do. So if enough animals were tagged, we might be able to figure out what's going on by simply tapping into this animal sixth sense. Also, many animals we know very little about. These tags could show us exactly how and where they migrate. It's basic natural history information, but by getting enough tags on animals and by tracking where they go, we may be able to detect increased populations of things like desert locusts, AKA the biblical plague. It could also help us pinpoint disease outbreaks before they become an even bigger problem. So we need a, a global connectivity of knowledge of animals and that's what Icarus provides. Now we have the theory and the data to prove that this is really working and we can use that knowledge. And that's fantastic. Well done. <laughs> Stay tuned though. This is not the end of what's happening here with Icarus. And I also wanted to thank our patrons who are contributing a dollar or two every video just to help me tell these important conservation stories. All right, thanks everybody. We'll see you in a future video. Thank you.